Hi everybody and welcome to another week of Matilda. This is our last week of Matilda this week. Uh, Monday is obviously today, Tuesday, Wednesday we've got one chapter and then Thursday and Friday, the last two days, we've got two chapters. So it's getting really, really good and last week we saw Matilda do her first miracle. So let's see what she's going to do today. So this chapter is called The Second Miracle. So the first miracle, remember, was when the glass was stood there and Matilda got so, so angry that she stared at the glass and she made it tip. And then eventually she made it actually knock um, the glass, she knocked the glass over with the power in her eyes and it went all over the trunch ball. So I wonder what's going to happen today. Well, let's find out. The Second Miracle. Matilda did not join the rush to get out of the classroom. After the other children had all disappeared, she remained at her desk, quiet and thoughtful. She knew she had to tell someone about what had happened with the glass. She couldn't possibly keep a gigantic secret like that bottled up inside her. What she needed was just one person, one wise, sympathetic grown-up, who could help her understand the meaning of this extraordinary happening. Neither her mother or father would be of any use at all. If they believed her story, it would be doubtful that they would. Um, they would almost certainly fail to realise what an astonishing, astounding event that had taken place in the classroom that afternoon. On the spur of the moment, Matilda decided that there was one person that she could confide in was Miss Honey. Matilda and Miss Honey were now the only two left in the classroom. Miss Honey had seated herself at her table and was rifling through some papers, which means she was looking through some papers. She looked up and said, well, Matilda, aren't you going to go outside with the others? Matilda said, please, may I talk to you for a moment? Of course you may. What's troubling you? Something very peculiar has happened to me, Miss Honey. Miss Honey became an, uh, an instantly alert ever since the two discussed uh, disaster, two disastrous meetings she had recently about Matilda. The first with the headmistress and the second with the dreadful Mr. And Mrs. Worm, um, Wormwood, Miss Honey had been thinking a great deal about this child and wondering how she could help her. And now here was Matilda sitting in the classroom with a curiously um, elevated look on her face and asking if she could have a private talk. Miss Honey had never seen her looking so wide-eyed and peculiar before. Yes, Matilda, she said. Tell me what's happened to you. What is so peculiar? Miss Trunchbull isn't going to expel me, is she? Matilda asked. Because it wasn't me who put that creature in the glass in the jug of water. I promise you it wasn't. I know it wasn't, Miss Honey said. And I'm going to be expelled. Oh, oh sorry. Am I going to be expelled? I think not, Miss Honey said. And the headmistress just got a little bit overexcited, that's all. Good, said Matilda. But that isn't what I wanted to talk to you about. What do you want to talk to me about, Matilda? I want to talk to you about the glass of water with the creature in it, Matilda said. You saw it spilling over Miss Trunchbull, didn't you? I did indeed. Well, Miss Honey said, I didn't touch it. I never went near it. I know you didn't, Miss Honey said. You heard me telling the headmistress that it couldn't possibly have been you. Ah, but it was me, Miss Honey, Matilda said. That's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. Miss Honey paused and looked carefully at the child. I don't think I quite follow you, she said. I got angry at being accused of something that I hadn't done and I made it happen. You made it happen, Matilda. I made the glass tip over. I simply still don't understand what you mean, Miss Honey said gently. I did it with my eyes, Matilda said. I was staring at it. I was wishing it to tip. And then my eyes went all hot and fuzzy, funny, and some sort of power came over me and the glass just toppled over. Miss Honey continued to look steadily at Matilda through her steel-rimmed spectacles and Matilda looked back at her just as steadily. I'm still not following you, Mat um, Matilda, Miss Honey said. Do you mean you actually will the glass to tip over? Yes, Matilda said, with my eyes. Miss Honey went silent for a moment. She did not think Matilda was meaning to tell a lie. It was more likely that she had simply allowed her vivid imagination to run away with her. So what she means is she just she knows Matilda wouldn't lie on purpose, but maybe she's just her imagination playing tricks on her. You mean you were sitting where you are now and you told the glass to topple over and it did? 
Something like that, Miss Honey, yes. If you did that, then it's just about the greatest miracle a person has ever performed since the time of Jesus. I did it, Miss Honey. It's an extraordinary thought, Miss Honey. Um, thought. It's extraordinary, thought Miss Honey, how often small children have flights of fancy like this. So, like, how children can make things up. She decided to put an end to it gently as possible. Could you do it again? she asked. Not unkindly. I don't know, Matilda said, but I think I might be able to. Miss Honey now moved an empty glass to the ta middle of the table. She put water in it. She asked, smiling a, li she asked, smiling a little. I don't think it matters, Matilda said. Very well then, go ahead, tip it over. It may take some time. Take all the time you want, Miss Honey said. I'm in no hurry. So Miss Honey wants to see if Matilda's actually telling the truth, if she can actually do it. Matilda was sitting in the second row about ten feet away from Miss Honey. She put her elbows on the desk and she cupped her face in her hands. And this time she gave the order right at the beginning. Tip, glass, tip, she ordered it. But her lips didn't move and she made no sound. She simply shouted the words inside her head. And now she concentrated her whole mind, her whole brain and her will up into her eyes. And once again, much more quickly than before, she felt an electricity gathering, a power that was beginning to surge in the millions of tiny, visible little arms with hands on them were shooting out towards the glass. And without making any sound at all, she kept on shouting inside her head for the glass to go over. She saw it wobble. Then it tilted and then it toppled right over it and it fell with a tinkle on top of the table, 12 inches away from Miss Honey's folded arms. Now, if you have a look, you can see Matilda here. She's really, really concentrating. Look on her mind. You can see her eyes are really wide. And then have a look at Miss Honey's face. Before we read it, how do you think she's feeling? Mm, I think she's going to be feeling shocked or puzzled. Or surprise, maybe. What do you think? Right, let's keep reading. Miss Honey's mouth dropped and her eye open, and her eyes stretched so wide you could see the whites all around. She didn't say a word, so she's maybe flabbergasted. She's shocked and surprised. She couldn't. The shock. Oh, there we go. So we were right. She is shocked. The shock of seeing the miracle performed had struck her dumb, which means that she's so shocked that she, she can't talk. She had gaped at the glass, leaning well away from it now, as though, as though it might be a dangerous thing. Then slowly she lifted her head and looked at Matilda. She saw the child white in the face, as white as paper, trembling all over, her eyes glazed, staring straight ahead and seeing nothing. The whole face was transfigured, the eyes round and bright, and she was sitting there speechless, quite in a quite beautiful in a blaze of silence. So Matilda's sitting there, her face is a little bit pale, and she's just staring, and she's in complete silence. Miss Honey waited, trembling uh, a, a little herself, and watched the child as she slowly stirred herself back into consciousness. So it was almost as if she was in kind of a daze when she knocked the glass over. Then suddenly, click! And her face went almost back to um, calm. Oh, I'm all right, she smiled, she said and smiled. I'm quite all right, Miss Honey, don't be alarmed. So she can see that Miss Honey is feeling very shocked. So she's reassuring her, saying, I'm fine, Miss Honey, don't worry about me. You seem so far away, Miss Honey whispered, awestruck. Oh, I was. I was flying past the stars on a silver wings, Matilda said. It was wonderful. Miss Honey was still gazing at the child in absolute wonderment, as though she were the creation, the beginning of the world, the first morning. It went much quicker this time, Matilda said quietly. It's not possible, Miss Honey said, gasping. Oh, I don't believe it. I simply don't believe it. She closed her eyes and kept them closed for a while. And she, when she opened them again, it seemed as though she had gathered herself back together. So she, what she did, she closed her eyes. She took a little time to think about it, to process it. And then when she's opened her eyes, she's come to terms with it. She's kind of realising it. Would you like to come and have tea at my cottage? She asked. Oh, I'd love to, Matilda said. Good, gather up your things and I'll meet you outside in a couple of minutes. 
You won't tell anyone about this, this thing, will you, Miss Honey? I wouldn't dream of it, Miss Honey said. So that was the second miracle. So Matilda has done this twice now. So if she's done it maybe once, maybe it was a bit of a fluke, a once off. Now she's done it twice. Maybe she can do it with different things or more things. But at the end of the chapter, Miss Honey invites her back to her house, her cottage, for a cup of tea. Now, seeing as Matilda's parents, we know, don't care that much for her. And um, there are really no adults in her life, apart from Miss Honey and maybe Mrs Phelps, who have really not shown any interest in her. How do you think Matilda feels that she's been invited back to Miss Honey's um, cottage for tea? I think... As she says here, look, she would say, oh, I would love to. So when you say that, you wouldn't just say, oh, I'd love to. You'd really use your voice to show how excited Matilda is. So oh, I'd love to. She's really excited um, because, like I said, there are not many adults have actually shown that much interest in her. So the fact that she's going to go back to Miss Honey's cottage to have tea with her, and I'm sure Miss Honey will spoil her. So they, two of them, have got a nice relationship, a nice bond. So maybe that's an adult that Matilda can actually um, trust and rely on and actually get a bit of love and support from. Right, well, we're going to um, finish the chapter there and we're going to come back tomorrow and we'll see what the tea was all about. I hope you enjoyed today's chapter and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.